Hello, this is Pendle from Soundust, and I'm here with the new updated Infundibulum 1.1, which is absolutely glorious. I would say that. I always say I would say that, but I would say that. Anyway, what I'm going to show you is one of the new features which has been often requested, and it's always been doable, but I've just made space for it to actually work now. So let's just play. This is all about how you load your own samples. It comes with loads of um, sample sets already preloaded, but I'm going to show you how to achieve your own sample loading. Okay, so you'll see on each of the channels, there's the user sample section. So if I turn those two off now, guess what? That won't play. Let's stop that. Yes, um, because there's no user sample loaded because I'm a user and I haven't sampled. So this is how we do it. First thing, click the spanner at the top, which opens up the kind of um, the gubbins of the machine. It should automatically open up to a view something like this because that's how I've set it. If it doesn't, click on the mapping editor. That's what you want, okay? And then if you go, to be doubly sure, go to expert over here, and this shows you all the groups that are already in there. And then if we go to the very bottom, you can select the user sample that you want to load just to make sure that you have the right group editor. If you load up the wrong one, you'll get some other stuff, okay? So you want user samples. I'm now magically gonna drag a sample from over there somewhere into here. Now, as you see, as I move up, it'll stretch over the whole area, or if I move down, you can specifically put it on one key. Let's put it on a C3. Now, the range that I've used, of samples I've used in this instrument go from C6 to A minus one. Okay, so that's the whole keyboard range now stretched out. If I play that, you can see me hitting notes. But that's not all. We've also got other settings to do. This is, it's not complicated if you know what you're doing, but there are things you need to know how to do, and I will do them. Uh, also, you can adjust your volume here as well. So if it's too quiet or too loud, you can set it here. Let's just leave it on zero for now. There we go. Or oh, zero-ish. Okay, next stage is to, we need to set start points for the sample and loop points. And to do that, double click. There's a sample which looks quite low and quiet, but as you can see, you can zoom into it here. You can see it doesn't really get started till around about here. So, don't zoom out. You can pick up this fella here, move it there. That's the sample start point, okay? Uh, you'll see this green line here as well, and that is the how much we can adjust the sample start point. And uh, as it's quite a long sample, let's make this smaller. This is called sample start modulation. Let's take it down to because the more if you have the longer you have this set, the more it's going to eat into your um, memory when you're storing it. Okay, we also need we can set the endpoints here as well if we want. Now to make a loop. Hit the one here, doink. That makes a loop over the whole uh, sample. But what for this particular instrument, we need to have a very small loop near the beginning of the file. This is nothing massively scientific, but a small loop. So you can zoom in and out here. But we'll go about that size. Also, you might want to use the crossfade here as well. So if you don't want it to click, a bit of crossfade. Sometimes it will click, sometimes you want clicks, but that's where you adjust that. And that's it. If you want to get out of there, click mapping editor again, still there. You can do, you can put as many samples in as you want this way, but this, you'll have to do the same thing for each sample. Okay, so if I now click out of there, that sample should be loaded and these controls, so that's sample start point, that's the loop length, and this is the loop start. Okay, so that should. Okay, it's a little bit quiet. So let's go back here again and just take that up. Sample start here. Depends on the sample itself. 
how much difference that makes. Loop point. There, so you can hear it, tiny loop. And then you can move where the loop is. So that, that in itself is a pretty powerful feature. That's always there now, once you save it. So you can, if I go back to an original sound and then back again, still there. Possibly in the wrong key. Let's add in some other sounds. The, um, let's turn those off again. If we're using this, So using gate mode, that basically lets the sam sample run for its whole loop length and basically cuts in and out. So if you've got a long loop, you'll get more interesting things than a short loop, but it also depends on what you've got going on in your sample as well. So you can do that to uh, all three of the oscillators. And you can make, you know, make as many of your own instruments you want this way. What you need to do is save, though. So click on the uh, save the icon there, save as, and then just give it a new name here. My sample. If you save it as patch only, as long as you don't move the sample, it should find it for you every time. If you save patch and samples, then it'll save all of the samples every single time, which will leave you with a lot of save samples that you don't need. If you do save instruments under a new name, you'll lose the original snapshots because they work by the name of the actual NKI. So the thing to do is then load them in the way shown in the uh, other tutorial. Spanner, instrument option, snapshot. And then it will show you the folder where everything needs to go. So there you go user sample loading in the lovely Infundibulum 1.1. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.